one for our communities. We do all have four different uh, core products. We have offer Hop Insights adults. We offer for youth. We also work uh, within the workplace and we are a Hub Insight disaster. In this case, we are the only um, organizations that focus on disaster preparedness in terms of financial recovery and uh, financial um, education, you know, before the disaster or financial recovery. So the program that we are talking about today, the Startup Tips for Entrepreneurs, it goes be inside the Hub Inside Adult. As you can see, we offer credit and money management, home buyer preparedness, and the small business development program. And we do offer entrepreneurship for the youth. This one is in collaboration with high schools and elementary schools in the communities where we serve. And inside the workplace, we offer mainly what it is, uh, disaster preparedness and credit and money management. As you can see, we have a, a broad amount of partners that we collaborate with, including the SBA, uh, FEMA, uh, the IRS, for, and, uh, and several different in institutions. So the core focus of the small business program is that we offer an entrepreneurship training, which is currently an eight weeks training where you know, entrepreneurs will meet with a coach for a, eight sessions once a week. And the main purpose of this training is to you know, provide tools uh, to complete a business plan or to create a business plan before actually starting a business. And a few different numbers that I can share with you uh, throughout the 28 years that we have been serving our communities, uh, we have helped uh, 75,000 entrepreneurs and we have created over 700 new businesses. So, sorry, we have helped create uh, over 700 new businesses. Next slide, please. So uh, you, you're in this workshop because either you're interested in opening a business, you have an idea, or maybe you're just trying to figure out what is out there um, to get an extra income or to leverage your income. So this is from the Secretary of State. It's kind of like a steps um, or a checklist before getting it started with a business, mainly in legal, legal terms, legality or formality of the business. So what the Secretary of State recommends before starting a business is to prepare and plan. You know, uh, do your market research, uh, create the outline or your business plan before uh, getting started with the legal formalities of the business. So why, uh, why do you think this is important? You know, do the market research or have a business plan? I want you to answer me. Why do you think it's important to be prepared before um, starting a business? Either you can unmute yourself, share any thoughts about it, or um, you can either chat, uh, put it in chat. Don't be shy. Looks like our audience is a little shy. <laughs> oh, here we go. Um, so here, can you see the chat, Danita? Yes. Yes, okay. Why do you think there is no need for a business plan? No, what I meant, actually, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see me. <laughs> yes, I can see you. Okay. Um, First of all, thank you for offering this. Uh, what I meant was maybe there is no need for your for that type of business. So if you don't really don't know, you might be investing in the wrong place. Uh, oh, yes, that yes, 
So now I understand what you were trying to say. Exactly. Doing your market research will help you understand the need of the community. As Joan was saying, if maybe there's no need for the service or the product that you're trying to provide. So doing that market research, research can help you um, see if there's an existing need up there to be able to, to start your business. So if there is no need, there's no point on, a, on starting a business. You will lose time and resources on it. It may be not, may be, uh, not successful, okay? And actually, uh, you're saying, Samantha is saying uh, that doing research, it helps you pitch your business to others, exactly. Uh, most of the time entrepreneurs, um, if they don't have their financial resources to start a business, they may need either a loan or any type of investing uh, investor from an angel investor or, or any other person. And they will want to know, okay, what have you done regarding this business? So they want to know what you have um, in place for the business. Okay. And uh, I don't know if I pronounced correctly, uh, Carmela. She's saying that, you know, to, to show, to know where do you want to go with the business? Exactly. The business plan, it prepares you to the current stage of the business, to, for, to start the business, and how will you grow your business? To make sure, uh, yes, that the business makes sense to make money. Exactly. One, that's one of the main purposes of having a business plan. Does it really, am I going to really uh, be profitable with the business? So all of those answers or all of those comments that you're sharing with me or with us, uh, those are responded by uh, establishing the business plan and doing the, your market research. And to ensure the business has the right competitive edge. Yes, that's correct, Serene. And of course, provide getting your business plan or setting uh, your business plan, it will help you set your uh, goals in terms of what you want to accomplish with your business. Okay, so that's the first step, we'll say, uh, to get a business. You know, do your research and uh, if you can't outline your business or have a business plan. Second, uh, secure financing if necessary. This step uh, may be go this as a second, maybe go in a different place. It all depends on the business and it all depends on how financially prepared are you. Sometimes some entrepreneurs will use their own money before they stand in a business. So do, do they, they don't um, start a business in debt. Then the legal formalities, you will have to choose. We're gonna talk a little bit about each one of them later on. So you will have to choose a entity, either a limited liability corporation or a corporation or partnerships, or either you can choose to be a sole proprietor. And of course you have to have a business name. And you can do this with the Secretary of State in regards to the business entity. And in regards to the business name, if necessary, you will have to go to the county where you're gonna be located. Now, another important thing about a business is location. Especially if you are offering a in-person service, uh, the location is important uh, to check the zoning, zoning regulations and all the requirements for the, lo for the local or the uh, building that you're trying to get for your business. You need to make sure, for example, if you're opening a restaurant, that it, that it complies with all the regulations of the county and the state. And that leads to having or getting your business licenses and permits when necessary. Some of uh, the businesses that requires license uh, may be an accountant, a lawyer, 
definitely a restaurant and especially if they're gonna sell uh, alcoholic beverages and those type of um, spas, they need a uh, license and permits. And usually most of the businesses, they need a seller's permit if you're gonna be selling a, any type of product. You will have to get your EIN number, that one you get it with the IRS for tax purposes and you know comply with tax, all the tax information required by the IRS or the franchise tax board. Again, you can also go to the Secretary of State and look for the uh, filing requirements uh, of the business that you're trying to open or that you're trying to start. Next slide, please. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit about um, starting the business plan. So what we're gonna cover in this uh, small presentation is around the business plan. We're, we already know what the legal formalities are for the business. Now we're gonna see in terms of the business plan, what do we want, what do we need? And the first thing Joanne was saying, is there a need for my business? How do we know if there is a need for that business? And that one we have to, you know, uh, doing the market research, but also doing a SWOT analysis. And in that SWOT analysis, we are going to put us in the, in, in the spot, let's say. We're going to evaluate ourselves in terms of a, a strength and weaknesses before we start in the business. And we also are going to evaluate the opportunities are, and threats that are in the market. So maybe uh, one a person in the previous uh, session was mentioning about, they even asked me, so is it, is it okay to start a business right now with this pandemic? I was saying, um, it depends on the business. Some businesses are thriving uh, right now because what they saw an opportunity uh, through this um, process or the, the past year, and even though some of the business failings, there are uh, opportunities in the market. So that's why we need to do this SWOT analysis to evaluate what are our opportunities, uh, current opportunities, and what are the threats that we're gonna uh, may face to start in the business. And on that, once we have that SWOT analysis, we can try to establish um, actions and directions where to utilize those opportunities to our advantage and transform the threats to our strengths, you know, using our strengths. And of course, we want to work on our weaknesses to solidify and to convert them into strengths also. Let me see. Sorry, I'm trying to, to catch up with the chat. Okay. Once we have this SWOT analysis, we want to understand our market and what is going to make you different. What is that you're offering different that, uh, from the rest? And that is your competitive advantage on the business. And of course, you have to determine who is your target market and who is your niche. It depends on, again, depends on the type of business that you're gonna, that you're gonna start. You may be, if your servicing um, may be a, a specific community or maybe just specific area, geographic area within, within your community. That's something that you need to know. And if in this case, you will want to, we will want to have numbers uh, determined in your, in your business plan. Okay, um, an amount of maybe families or, or the regular income for those families, um, things like that. And uh, the most important thing that is your strength are related to your experience and background. What, what are you bringing to your business? If you're maybe you want to start a restaurant, but you don't know 
uh, how to manage a kitchen, it may not be suitable for you to, to get it into that business. So you need to, to take a look at your strength. Um, also, it's related with your passion. What are you passionate about? What is that you love to do? And how you can convert that to a profitable business. So that it helps you get your background and your experience converted to your strengths and then get that to your business. Okay, I have a question here. The EDD is in the uh, employment department. And the other one is the Board of Equalization. So those are different entities that regulate uh, the businesses. Okay. Do you have any comments or any question about the feasibility of the business? I actually have a question about one slide back. Um, yes. Thank you for your time and for um, hosting this. I appreciate it very much. What is a fictitious business name and why or why would um, I want one of those? Thank the you. fictitious business name is your business name, okay? Uh, it, you register with the county and mainly you will want to have a business name because you want your clients to identify you as your business. I mean, it's, it's gonna be different, your clients uh, is that we'll go with, for example, um, I don't know, maybe any 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 business, McDonald's, instead of providing, you know, okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to Robert Fraser business to get a. I see, um, I see. Okay. So you want you want a name that is gonna be. Um, that the people is going to know that is going to relate to your business to what you do got it and it will also help you to set up a business credit or business financial accounts oh good thank you so yes you will want to start if you want to start a business you want to start a business separate from your personal uh finances in that in that case Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if there's no question about the feasibility, we can move to the next slide, please. Now, how to choose a... The EIN number, you get it with the IRS. is optional, it's optional. Usually when you register with the Secretary of State as an LLC or as a corporation, they may not be in need of having a business name, but some financial institutions will require you to have a business name. Okay, so talking about the uh, different, um, Formalities or legal formalities, limited liability company. We have a broad range of um, entities, uh, starting with the sole proprietorship. For the sole proprietorship, you won't need a business name. You don't need to register with the Secretary of State. You just go, um, you know, go outside your or your front door and you start selling, or you may start selling online, but you do it on your under your name, under your personal name. Um, that's the least regulated formality uh, entity that, uh, that are out there. And you will, the only thing that you will have to do is file your taxes um, with the IRS every year. Then the, the other side of the spectrum would be the corporation or professional corporations. So the corporations are we're gonna call it the bigger companies, but um, in terms of formality, you know, they are uh, the most regulated, is the most, we're gonna say expensive to set up. You need a, 
you need a, a board of directors, board of members, and um, the statements of incorporation and, and, and different uh, formalities that are required by the, by the state and by the government. So we have the two, um, two opposites, the sole proprietorship, which is the least regulated, and we have the corporation, which is the, the most regulated. So all the other partnerships and limited liability partnerships, all those uh, gets kind of in the middle uh, of the two. And the limited liability company actually is kind of like a mix between the sole proprietorship and the corporation. So when you are a sole proprietor, you are doing business under your name, under your personal, uh, under your personal entity, right? But when you are registered with the state as a limited liability company or any other partnership or a corporation, you have a separate entity from yourself that is protecting you in case of any lawsuit for, for, you, for, your, for your business. I don't know if, if I make sense with this. It makes sense. I was just wondering if you could give a good example of why someone would have a sole proprietorship if that's the one where they, they could get sued. Is that my question? Yeah, it depends. But, Again, depends on the business. For example, a, a gardener may not need uh, to file for a limited liability company if, they, if he don't want to grow. So you will want to... Um, establish an entity if you want to grow your business. But if you're just trying to uh, have it as a side hustle, there's no need to, to file for a, a limited liability company or a corporation. And one time that you can maybe get sued as a sole proprietor, if it's uh, the product you're selling, it may be harmful for, for the person that is buying it. So you want to, or, you want also to protect yourself. Let's say if you get a, a business loan and then do your business cannot repay that loan. So what if you're not a no limit, limit liability company, the bank, who is gonna, who is gonna go after the, the bank? The, the bank will ask you for um, a collateral. Most of the time you may use uh, your home or a car or whatever. So what the bank is going to do is going to go after your personal um, assets. Mm. So uh, being as an entity, a limited liability company or a corporation can protect your personal assets in, the, in those cases. Okay, thank you. But again, um, what we recommend is try to consult a CPA or a business attorney in this regard. In terms of taxes, what are uh, better for you? And in terms of liability. Next slide, please. We have a couple of questions in the chat, Danita. Did you want to catch those before you move yes. on? Yes, yes, let me see. Okay, we cover uh, the EIN number and the business name. Uh, for an online business, uh, if, this, if you're gonna do it as a side hustle, you can just do it as a sole proprietorship. You don't need to establish a, a legal entity unless the, the websites where you trying to sell, I request it to you too. Yes, exactly. Uh, what Bridget is saying is that you can start your business as a sole proprietor uh, at the beginning, and then you can move to an LLC or a corporation when the business grows. Yes, uh, Bridget, that is correct. I, I understand that the LLC is not a license to borrow money, 
but at least it may sometimes protect you. Once the business is established and once you establish your business um, credit, uh, you can separate yourself from your business. And most of the time, uh, the collaterals that the banks are gonna ask you to from, um, from the business, it may be um, your sales, you know, uh, contract sales or your inventory. So those are some type of collateral that you can use with a bank in terms of business collateral. That's a good, that's a good re, uh, comment. You will also want to get an insurance, a liability insurance once you're starting a business, any type of entity that you're gonna establish, either even sole proprietorship or a corporation, there is always a good um, idea, a good move to buy an insurance. You may want to register your business if you want to grow it and if you want to uh, make it your principal source of income. There are some classes that you can help you build your business credit, but we do not offer those classes. So uh, there are a lot of people, a lot of coaches out there that they're offering those uh, type of classes or courses to build your business credit. I think that was the last one. Now, you are talking about a business name. What do you want to uh, have a business name? We, we, we already talked about this. We want, you want to, your cl clients to think about your business and what your business does. So what, how to select a business name? Well, you, first of all, you have to kind of like a, do a survey, you know, have a few in mind, few business uh, name in mind, and then, Try to understand or have colleagues or friends uh, to take a look at your business. And you can do it two different ways. You can show them the business and you can ask them, what do you think this business does? And then they will, they will tell you, I think this business may be do whatever product or whatever service they, they think. Uh, and then that can help you understand, okay, is my business selling the right uh, idea that I want to sell in my business name? Or the other, the other um, question that you can ask them, okay, uh, this is, a, let's say, a spa business. Does this name fit into this category? What do you think? And then you will get a feedback of that business. You know, so to get to, to your actual uh, business name. And then Google it, and if it already exists, or maybe in the county, you do a, a business name search and you will know if the name that you're thinking of or the name that, that you choose is available or not. And again, if you get feedback from the business name that you have, you know, be open to, to that feedback. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, uh, well, starting to write a business plan. Maybe you can start with a lean business plan or a one, two page business plan. Just try to focus on your mission statement or the purpose of your business. Uh, what is the outlook? What do you want to accomplish? That will be your vision statement. And again, you already mentioned, why do you need a business plan? Uh, you know, to understand where, where you want to go, to keep everyone online, and of course, to, to pitch your business for possible lenders or investors. Okay, next slide, please. Link to the business plan, you will want to develop a marketing and advertising strategy. So how will you engage with your target marketing? 
Are you gonna use social media or are you gonna use a traditional marketing or traditional advertising strategy? The only thing that you will want to know uh, if you know that the strategy that you're using may help you track sales. Okay, and that uh, that's awesome. I see that people is sharing information in, in the chat, so you can you can um, take advantage of those. Next slide, please. Okay, so once you have the idea, your business idea, what you want to do in your marketing uh, strategies, you will want to know how much money do you need to start a business. Okay, first of all, make a list, make a list of every detail of every single item that is going to be needed in your business. And then on that list, you're going to see, okay, what do I really want to run the business? And what do I really need to run this business? Sometimes needs and wants uh, overlaps, uh, but sometimes we can um, wait a few months or uh, once the business is established to get the full um, amount of items that we, we want for the business. Let's say for example, a, an online business. What do you need? You need a computer, um, you need a website, uh, you need to uh, your the legal formalities, right? And what do you want? Maybe you will want a desk, you will want a, a printer or paper, or all those types of things. So you need, really need to know what are the, what is that you really need and want for your business and eliminating or just waiting a little bit uh, on the wants can help you reduce your initial startup expenses by at around 25%. So once you have the amount of money that you need to start your business, I will suggest, you know, we always suggest uh, to start a business, you will need a certain amount of money, but then you will need a certain amount of money for the first six months of operation. So you will combine those amounts and that is the total money that you will need to start your business. Just because in the first month, uh, you don't know how the, the business is going to move. So you will need to have some capital to move, uh, to move around during the first months of their business. And I think we're going to cover now, uh, next slide please, about where to get funding. There are different sources of funding. The traditional lending, community lenders of through the SBA or that works with the SBA. Uh, you can use crowdfunding. You can ask to family and friends who invest in your business. You can use your own resources um, and, and do a research. Let's uh, research what is out there. What you can, uh, what type of money you can get to your business. So. We want to start a business with either low or no debt. Because you know, starting a business in debt is going to be um, a long road or it's going to be, it will take you longer time to recover from, from the negative numbers to be a profitable business. Uh, but you know, at least you will have an idea where to get funding. And if you go with the traditional lending or if you go with a loan for a business, just keep in mind that they're gonna take a look at your capacity, which means um, if, you, if your business or you are gonna be able to repay the loan, the collateral, what are you gonna put as a collateral for the business? What are the conditions of the loan? It may be uh, interest rate or the term of the loan, how many years you will have to be repaying that loan. And character, uh, that is regarding your personal credit history. So bank will, before creating your business uh, credit, banks or any financial institution will like, take a look at your personal credit. If you manage your finances, your personal finances well, good 
they may think about uh, uh, accepting your proposal for a business. Sorry to interrupt, there is a question uh, sent to me directly. Uh, I'd like to read it out. Um, how much socially uh, does a startup cost uh, that is to get started and maintain for three months? Again, it depends on the business. Uh, uh, depends on the type of business that you're trying to operate. Um, it may go, I don't know, I, I cannot see, uh, tell you a number per se, because we need to know specifically what type of businesses that you want to open and what are your operating expenses. What is that you're gonna need for operate the first few months? But usually uh, you will need maybe um, electricity, uh, internet, uh, maybe a computer, uh, a rent. If you're renting a space, um, you may need to by inventory, you may need to spend in marketing and all, all of those details uh, adds up to operating expenses. I hope thank that you. answered your question. Uh, thank you. I'm asking the participant to tell what, what type of business um, they want to start. So, so, so um, I'll ask again when, when, uh, when they respond. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The community lenders are basically uh, what we call credit unions or uh, lenders, not traditional lending, like not the big banks. So usually they are in the community, uh, closer to the community, they're not, uh, of they're not uh, around the country, let's say, or they have limited amount of um, locations. Next slide, please. So last year, uh, Operation Hope established a partnership with Shopify. So for those who of you uh, who identify as a African American, you all of you qualify to apply to this um, initiative. And you know, it provides you with a one on one business coaching, and you can get to our entrepreneurship program to get your business planned, and you will have some benefits with uh, Shopify specifically through this um, e-commerce platform, through this initiative. So I think um, I'm gonna send, I, I share with, with the, the library resources where you can um, get the, get a link with, the, with this initiative. So the purpose is that if by 2030, we want to help 1 million, um, entrepreneurs to establish their business or to grow their business. So if you identify as an African-American, you definitely qualify for this initiative. If you're interested in, show, in learning more, um, I do have, uh, I think in the next slides, we have the link to, to the 1MBB uh, initiative. Okay, so part of the 1MBB, you get a, the training, this uh, training that I mentioned. Uh, this one already started on March 20th. It's an eight week course um, that focuses on, you know, helping you establish your business plan. Okay, um, doing help, will help you to do your SWOT analysis, uh, learn a little bit about marketing and what are your um, marketing strategies or advertising strategies understanding your business financials and what it will cost you to run your business for the first uh, years and how to gain access to credit capital. And that includes all the programs that are offered by the SBA. And of course, it will uh, allow you to network and develop your speaking and, and skills. If you're interested in participating in one of these uh, training, you can just let me know and I can get you in contact with the next uh, 
sorry. I can uh, tell you when the next cohort will start. Next slide, please. So if you want to access all of resources, you have the links here. Uh, you have, we have a, our website uh, and you have the link for the 1 million black business if you want to go through that initiative. We also have an app that is called Hope in Hand. If you want to access our resources, you can also uh, feel free to download that app and uh, register through the app. We do offer, again, I mentioned at the beginning, we offer disaster preparedness and disaster recovery. So we do have a COVID-19 guidance and assistance um, uh, resource too. So you will have your, you will have the presentation. So you will be able to just click on those links whenever uh, you get the presentation and you will go, it will direct you to the website. Mm, and uh, next slide, please. Okay, so if you uh, have any question regarding the presentation, um, that's, uh, I will answer some questions. And I would like to ask you also for a feedback. If this presentation was what you were expecting or what can we add more to the presentation? Uh, yes, uh, there is a question. It was uh, the, a follow up to the previous question that I read out um, about you know, how much it will cost um, uh, to start a business, to, to run a business for, uh, for the first three months. And uh, the, the person actually wanted to start a brokerage um, firm services on financial planning um, and education uh, drive along. Um, so um, yeah, possibly how, how much would it cost? And, and they want to start a business with the least amount of debt. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, are you, I would like to know more about the, the type of business. Are you trying to educate people? On, on financially, or are you trying to uh, do? Looks, looks like it's financial planning and education. Yeah, I think, yeah, um, mm -hmm. it, it just well, it if, is part of it, yeah. Yeah, well, if, it's a, if it is education, you, you will want to treat it as a service, right? Yes. And if it's a service, or you can think about if you want to do it a, remotely on a virtual basis, there's not much needed for the business other than a computer, internet speed, and the space in your home, right? And most of us, we already have a computer. We already have internet at the home, right? Mm. So that type of thing lowered the cost of running the business. Okay, good question, Dave. What is the reason for incorporating in Delaware? Ah, you got me there. That may be a question for a business attorney. <laughs> uh, the yearly fees for an LLC um, are around 300, 500, and for a corporation, it's gonna be like 900 or 1,000. I'm not quite sure about that. Any other question or maybe comment about the presentation or feedback? Those are welcome. Okay, so NLC, uh, Samantha is saying is $800 in California. I'm sorry, did you already address uh, Art's uh, question um, about getting EIN? Um, Art is saying that he um, got it for free from a government site, but now he only sees sites that want to charge money pretending to be a government site. What is the actual government site uh, that you can get EIN? The IRS. Yeah, I IRS. just posted it. 
Oh, um, you did. Oh, okay. In the okay. chat, it's IRS hyphen EIN hyphen oh. number hyphen gov dot com. Okay, got it. Yes. Thank you. Yes, the IRS. That's the. I mean, you before paying someone to set up your entity, I will just go ahead and research what are the requirements or how much does it cost for the government to the go how much the government is charging for that so you you figure out uh, most of the time for an LLC you can do it yourself you don't need a business attorney you don't need to pay anyone to set up your business yes I was not talking about anything about Delaware I don't know um, where um, Dave got that question. That's why I, I, uh, I was not able to respond to him. But again, if you have any type of uh, legal question, I will uh, advise you to contact a business attorney. They will, may be able, they will be able to help you better. Through the government, to the Secretary of State, you will have to, um, I mean, with the Secretary of State, you will, you know, really know what are all the requirements for an LLC, and usually the government will tell you where to pay. Now, the SBA, now that uh, Beck is uh, talking about the SBA, the SBA is a go-to to start a business. It, will, it provides you with a lot of resources that you can connect to uh, for starting the business, including, um, I think you already mentioned SCORE. Uh, they offer mentorship and they also have online training regarding the business plan. And the SBA also have a platform, a learning platform where you can get uh, more information about either marketing and how to, to get your, your business started. Okay, I think we can stop sharing. And I would like to hear um, some other feedback. I have a little feedback. <laughs> this is Lori from the library. Um, yes, it, it will it will be great um, next time when we do this. You can actually read out the the question from the chat because I, I think sometimes people were focusing you know on your presentation and and they didn't actually read the question from other. It will be helpful. You know, uh, one one person's question might might be uh, helpful to you know ever you know other people will, will, will um, want to know the answer to that question. Okay, yes, thank you, Lori. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, you mentioned that there is a upcoming course regarding the business planning. And because yes. I'm interested, is that actually free or is that, uh, do I have to pay a fee? Yes, actually, uh, I forgot. I'm sorry, guys. I forgot to mention all the services that we provide are free to you. Oh, great. Yes. So if you're interested, uh, shoot me an email. I will get okay. you in contact with the coach that is delivering the next cohort. Hmm? Great, thank you. Yes. Yes, that is something that I forgot. I should, I should have thought, said that at the beginning. Yes, all, all of services are free. Any other comment? Rob says that he tuned in late, but got some good info in a short amount of time. So that's good. Thank you. Do you have any more information leading to those angel investors that you spoke of? Mm, I do not have information about angel investors, but again, through the SBA, there's a two options. You can either get in contact with the lender. And I, I do believe that the SBA, they also have a contact or a link for, for investors. Thanks. And I will, you know, just a, a 
outside of the presentation, outside of that, it's just a little, um, little bit of, um, let's say, free advertising for this platform. There is a new platform that is out there. I don't know if you have heard of is Clubhouse. So in this platform, uh, if you use it well, you can get in contact with um, investors. Can and you repeat you, um, what that name was? I didn't catch it. It's Clubhouse. I'm going to put it in there. In the chat, I think. Yeah. Wait, I have to select everyone. So in that in that platform, it is kind of like a, a audio chat type of thing. So you will meet with different people, talk about a specific topic. Uh, but you really, since you're entrepreneurs that want to start a business, you will really want to connect to those speakers or um, rooms, they call it rooms, who are talking about specifically about business. And there's a specific room that is for pitching your business and then you can probably get some feedback on your business and that, that sort of thing. And that is, you know, it gets you in contact with professionals or with people that it has a business that have been successful in the business. And also, yes, uh, the library is uh, saying that they also have um, resources on angel, angel investors. Okay. Uh, um, sorry, guys, I, may, I need to, to finish sooner. I have a baby and she's crying for me. Thank you, very Thank much. you very much. Thank you, yes. you Anita. And I will send the slides and um, the chat transcript and recording to all of you. Um, Thank you. Not today, then tomorrow. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank you. very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Danita. Okay, bye. Thank you, Maureen. <laughs>